Tonight, I gave birth to a double ward, is what I did. It is no small feat that we've come back to Nashville, and we are grateful. I'm grateful for the people here at Lipscomb. The Allen Arena has been an amazing facility. The people here have embraced us openly, and their hospitality has been awesome. So we're just glad to see such a great press turnout. Thank you for coming. I'm grateful for the diversity that I see in this room. It's awesome. God bless you all. I just want to recognize Deborah Evans Price, who's on the Gospel Music um, Association Board of Directors. Could you stand, Deborah? This is one of my board members. People, I couldn't do it without the support that I get from my board. You know, um, when I first took this job a couple of years ago, I asked the Lord about the Dove Awards, because this is quite the undertaking. And he gave me the scripture in Matthew that says that we should let our light so shine before men so that they will see our good works and glorify the Father in heaven. So I am very proud of each and every artist that comes across the stage because they represent not just great creativity, not just um, good fashion and flair, but they've given their lives and their gifts to communicate the gospel through their music. And um, that's going to have an enduring effect on our culture. So thank you for coming. Thank you for tweeting, blogging, communicating, and getting the word out on the great things that are happening tonight at the 44th Annual Devil Awards. Thank you all. With a higher demand comes uh, more opportunities to say no because there will always be another opportunity. So uh, me saying no to engagements or anything music related means I get to say yes to ministry opportunities in my local community um, and you know even things abroad. And so um, you know I've been very fortunate to be able to say no to a lot of things in order to say yes to some other things, um, just creating some balance and some priorities. So. Yeah, um, fortunately for me, uh, the, the uh, Billy Graham uh, Evangelistic Association has, um, you know, allowed me to serve on many occasions, um, taking me out to Haiti with Samaritan's Purse um, right after the earthquake and then uh, on the anniversary of it, I'm doing some Rock the Rivers, Rock the Lakes and, and you know, a lot of those um, opportunities and, you know, for me, I'm very passionate about seeing people not only come to Jesus, but get connected to local churches and local communities and, um, and that's something near and dear to their heart as well, um, plus just serving um, people in disenfranchised areas and so there's really a kindred spirit in terms of the uh, Billy Graham's uh, organization and, and myself and so um, just that long-standing relationship has uh, built itself out to me being able to serve in something um, on, a, on a different kind of scale on a different kind of uh, level in terms of media and um, I'm just honored uh, to be able to play a part in the legacy that Billy Graham has. Yeah, um, you know what doing music in mainstream especially as a hip-hop artist um, is, a, is what I would call a courageous leadership move. And the issue with, with courageous leadership is courageous leaders always make mistakes because no one's done it before. Um, so I'm not devoid of making mistakes. I'm not devoid of, you know, I, I may not do it all right, but I know it needs to be done. I look at Jesus and he says the, the gates of hell shall not prevail against you. Um, and gates are established to keep people out. And so if, if hell's gates are established to keep us out, um, and Jesus says they won't prevail, then that means I'm supposed to go in there and go grabbing people and pulling them out of, of the pit. And so, uh, you know, it's not pretty, it's, it's not glamorous. I know some people think, oh, you're trying to get mainstream status, but it's really ugly and it's a dark world. And, uh, you know, I'm very comfortable in the Christian, Christian world, but um, I do that to be uncomfortable. I do that to reach those uh, who otherwise wouldn't hear what I have to say. So. Yeah. Um, you know, the intention is never to, to create a stumbling block or to create confusion. And as I said, um, you know, courageous leadership is, is all about mistakes. You know, Peter chopped off somebody's ear, uh, turned his back on Jesus. Um, you know, Moses struck the rock. Um, and so all throughout the scriptures, you see leaders making moves and some of the moves are wrong moves. But these men still made it into the Faith Hall of Fame. And, um, and, and I think that what Hopefully what I'm demonstrating to a younger generation is that uh, we need to be courageous. We need to step out in, outside of our comfort zones, outside of the boxes, to be a light in the dark places. Um, it doesn't mean conforming. Um, it means uh, being all that Jesus has called you to be. And 
becoming a thermostat, I mean a, a, a thermostat instead of a thermometer. A thermometer changes temperature with everything around it, but a thermostat controls the temperature. And whenever I'm in those environments, I'm not controlled by what's going on around me, um, nor led to compromise what I stand firm on and what I believe. I don't know, you know, I don't know. I, I'm, you know, all those are great artists, and um, I'm, I'm an artist who loves music, and, um, and all those artists that I've collaborated with are people that I really enjoy as people as well. And so uh, genuine relationships and great music, I'm all in. So if you know those people, tell them to holler at me. I love you someone need to breathe. If you listen, I need to breathe. Come on, let's do it. I really was shocked um, to win a Grammy. You know, really wasn't on my bucket list, um, just being honest. Um, you know, again, for me, um, at the end of the day, when I die, I hope to die a revolutionary, a, mini uh, a missionary. Um, you know, I, I know art is a part of my, uh, my gifting, and um, it's what, I, it's what I, I do, but I hope that doesn't define me as a person. And so, um, you know, to, to be able to, to receive that uh, accolade is great. Um, it's, it's, a, it's an award, you know, and I'm grateful for the awards, but God gives the rewards, and that's what I'm mostly concerned about. Church Close 2, uh, it's a, it's a mixtape that I plan on releasing this year to uh, engage uh, urban culture. And so uh, it's gonna be good, you'll love it. God bless. <clears throat> he said, have I thought about doing a CD with just me and Lecrae? Um, I have much respect for Lecrae. Uh, definitely one of my favorite artists out there. A guy that's, um, doing amazing things in hip-hop, things that we've only dreamed of doing for years when it comes to the heart of gospel and hip-hop music. Um, you know, I have to talk to Lecrae about that. I did one song on my record uh, with Lecrae on it called Forgiveness, and I'm honored that he would be with me uh, on, the, on the record. Um, super proud that, to have him on it. I love his heart as well as his skills in the rap game. I mean, I, you know, she asked uh, about the creative process and what it's been like, that creative process as far as expand, expanding the creative realms of making records. I mean, I just kind of go in the studio. My, my rule when I record is this. Don't depend on anything that worked last time and don't fear anything that didn't work last time. Yeah. So you just go in with open canvas and try your best to be creative. But the, the real secret for me is being aware of my weaknesses and knowing I'm just not that good. So that leads me to my knees, you know what I mean? And I ask God to breathe things through me that are beyond me. And he's always so gracious when I ask him to do that. Because uh, my goal is to use my music to turn people's eyes toward God. Well, that's beyond me. That, just that, the very nature of what I'm trying to do is beyond me. So I'm just a needy little artist asking God to do something big. Yeah. Um, one of the things God's put on my heart is to, uh, you know, not just look ahead, but to look and, and, and reach out to artists that are, that are doing, that are making music, that are, that are stretching the boundaries of what is called gospel or Christian music. Capital Kings is a perfect example, doing EDM music. They just played a few minutes ago. Um, but, you know, it's, it's interesting, same with Jamie Grace, she's quite different for our industry. An African-American young lady from the South playing acoustic and singing these amazing songs with a heart of gold. Um, I mean, I love, I love it. I love working with young talent. And so many times when I, when I get around them, I think I'm signing something this big, and all of a sudden it, I watch them blossom. Like to watch Jamie Grace blossom, you sign something so much deeper and wider than you ever imagined on a creative level. And so many times, I think I'm trying to help them, and they end up literally inspiring me and inspiring my music. So it's my honor to work with them, truly. Yeah, I mean, I'm privileged to have a lot of history with Dr. Graham. I've played many of his uh, crusades uh, with DC Talk and as a solo artist, Toby Mac and my band Diverse City. Um, there's not a better feeling for an artist that has a heart that wants to turn people's eyes toward God to walk on a stage and just be able to perform his music. Because, you know, usually a lot of times it's on us at our concerts to kind of perform our music and share a little. Well, think about it. If I can just do my music and I have Billy Graham sharing, come on, man. That's the easy street, Doc. That's the best it gets. I mean, 
all of a sudden you feel so confident in what you're doing and you're gifting because you know Billy Graham's going to follow you up with a, with a message of hope. It, it's again, I've been so honored to work with amazing talent and be around people like Dr. Billy Graham. Uh, I'm excited about the project and the remix of City on Our Knees. Thank you guys. Peace. I'll tell you, Mac is a legend, man. He's a legend. I'm, I was honored to even do any music with him in the first place. And so I told him if he ever wants a song with me, man, all you got to do is ask. So, yeah, absolutely. Man, I'm, I first of all, I'm so proud of my boys, man. Trip Lee, Andy, Minio, KB. They rocked it tonight. It was an amazing performance. Um, that, that's the highlight of my night. I don't. I can go home. Like you could take, keep all my awards. I don't care. I'm just excited to see that. Like that transition is bigger than me. It's it's a movement, and I want people to see that it's it's way more than me as an individual. Um, that it's 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 the artists. It's the it's people out there. Like we collectively are a movement of unashamed believers who can impact this world with our art, with our time, our talents, our treasures, and so. Um, my hope for the, the future of, of our label is um, is to continue putting leaders out there, you know, putting leaders out there who can do good music and, uh, and inspire um, an, another generation of, of people to, to, to serve God unashamedly. I think I'm in that area of ministry of being single, because I am, so <laughs> it's not necessarily a ministry that I was choosing to walk into, but once you hit a certain age and you've never been married, um, it's your ministry, you know, whether you like it or not. And for a long time I didn't like it, but I'm learning to be content with my singleness now instead of pining away for that future husband. My friend Lisa Harper says that her husband is lost and refuses to ask for directions, and my husband is lost and refuses to ask for directions. Um, and so I used to just be so upset and discontent, but this last year, um, I'm really learning the benefits of being single. Maybe it's because so many of my friends are married, and so I hear some of their stories, and little things like having my own bed to myself, and being able to fly off um, on Mother's Day. I booked a quick flight to Charlotte and I supported my friend Lisa Turkers to a speaking in church. That's not something I probably would have been able to do if I had a husband and children and being able to support causes I love with my finances and not needing to check in with anybody. Those are real benefits of being single that I'm learning to appreciate and in the meantime I am looking forward to being married when that happens. I'm just not putting my life on hold waiting for it and um, there's a song on my Overcomer album I wrote with Chris August called Praying for you that is a letter to my future husband and it, while I'm waiting for my future husband I am praying for him and I'm also focusing on becoming the best woman that I can be so that I'm not just waiting to be completed by my better half I'm learning to be complete now <laughs> I do not know the next single overcomer has blown my mind in so many ways it's gonna be hard to follow it up but um, I have some ideas um, the distance is a song I wrote with Matthew West that I really love and I've never had a ballad necessarily do great at radio so I would love that I think um, the label capital CMG they're looking at back to you and press on as possible follow-ups in those two press on <laughs> we'll see I'm not sure yet <laughs> I didn't. I remember, I find out a lot on Twitter, and somebody tweeted me that of the American Idols that I was ranked like number five with the most billboard number ones, and that's insane to me because I came in ninth place on my season of American Idol, so I certainly didn't expect that, and I don't think anybody else did. That's right. It really is, it's the favor of the Lord, it's His plan, and I've learned instead of seeking fame and seeking, you know, the number ones, if I seek Jesus, then He just places me where He wants, and so I'm just taking my hands off and saying thank you, Lord. 